Hi everyone and welcome. If you are new here, my name is Diana Laura. I am an artist. I make sculptures out of copper, wood, and stone. I like showing people what I do and so I mainly upload shorts onto this channel. I occasionally make regular videos but because of my internet uploading that kind of content, it's a bit harder for me. This video is probably going to be one of my longest on this channel and I'm going to be covering something that I've been wanting to talk about for two years. In order to help me articulate what I want to say and not go off topic, I will be reading off an essay. So if you see me looking down a lot, that is why. It's been hard to talk about this topic or cover this topic in a way that I feel comfortable and that I feel is helpful and well articulated um, and that I'm happy with. One of the things that I'll be covering on this channel is something personal, something that I was taught not to speak about ever because it will, could be seen as something that would make me very vulnerable. But I feel like it is necessary when I am talking about my experience going to art school and applying to art school. I will also be touching on if art school is worth it or not. Please keep in mind that I don't really like putting labels on things. I don't like choosing labels for myself. I have tried for years to separate what I am perceived as from my art. I am very proud to be who I am. I'm not ashamed about it, uh, but you know, I was just raised a certain way. So some of that is still in my head as I try and open myself to other people. Um, I also really don't like to complain. So I've tried really hard to write this in a way where I am not complaining. I am simply just telling my story and what I went through. So here it is. Let's talk about my experience attending art school as a DACA recipient and everything that led up to it, the pressure, the outcomes, and how it has impacted me today. So I'm going to start a bit with my backstory. Ever since I was a little girl, I've shown signs of an artistic flair. I loved coloring books and I really enjoyed making things in general. At school, I wasn't particularly good at any specific subject. I always shined the most in art, from winning a state competition in elementary school to being recognized as one of the art kids in middle school, to having one of my portraits displayed in the school district building in high school. I was definitely drawn to the arts, specifically drawing. I did take a lot of art classes in high school. Besides that, I considered myself to be pretty good at math and I enjoyed algebra a lot. I also loved coming up with stories, so liberal arts could have been something for me, but my English has never been that good. My parents weren't really strict on grades as long as we weren't failing. I would say I started high school pretty weak in most of my subjects, but as I got older, I started to improving my grades for the most part besides science. So I wasn't really interested or passionate about any other subject besides art. I really did see myself being an artist and so did some of my friends. During my junior year towards the end of the year, I noticed that one of my friends, Sage, was doing drawings that weren't assigned in our regular art classes and I asked her about it. She told me it was taught by the pottery professor but that the class was too traditional for her and that she might not continue it next year. She also suggested that I should take it since I had that traditional style. I was scared of the pottery teacher so I was very hesitant of her suggestion. I asked another student who I admire how she liked taking those classes. She told me that I should really consider taking those classes and that the teacher wasn't too bad. I was very intrigued and decided to just bite the bullet and go talk to the teacher. I went during study period and I took my sketchbook with me. I told her I was interested in taking her drawing classes. She told me that she usually doesn't take students that late, that she prefers taking students in during their sophomore year. She asked me if I had any drawings I could show her. She seemed hesitant at first, but was impressed. So she said she'll take me in and gave me an assignment to complete over the summer, which I actually didn't do. And she kind of forgot that she gave me that assignment anyways, so it's fine. <laughs> now, jumping to the beginning of my senior year, I didn't know if I wanted to go to college, but as it started to become a very hot topic, I started to consider it more. I didn't know that AP classes counted as college credit. I thought it was something students took to torture themselves, which I don't know why I thought that, because literally nobody wants to do that. I just wanted to take this class because I wanted to become a better artist. My mom didn't know if I could actually attend university as a DACA recipient. We had many doors of opportunities open because of DACA, but attending college at this point was a mere rumor. DACA was established in 2012 and it was around 2014 
2015 that we started to take advantage of what DACA offered. But my mom was very skeptical the whole time. So when I told her I was considering secondary education, she was hesitant at first, but it didn't hurt to try. Now, during my senior year, I started to feel an immense amount of pressure. People started to ask me if I was thinking about going to art school because I wasn't allowed to talk about me being an immigrant or a DACA recipient. I often thought my classmates knew I wouldn't be able to go and that's why they were asking. I honestly became paranoid with the idea that they wouldn't want me to make it. So I tried literally everything to make it seem like, like I was one of them and that there wouldn't be an issue with me at going to college. I now see that that was stress and probably anxiety talking. In retrospect, I don't think anybody cared. I think people actually did want to know like if I was going to pursue art beyond high school. Again, going to high school is not something that is seen as like the best way to spend your money. So I'm sure these people were just curious to see if I was or wasn't, and I'm sure they were just trying to be supportive. But I took their questions as interrogation, which that's I'm pretty sure that's not what they were trying to do. Being the oldest of my family, I was expected to always be on my best behavior and to do my best. I was also under a lot of pressure to accomplish the most the fastest, which also meant that I would be the guinea pig since I would be the first to everything. So when you're giving such an advantage, you want to do what would be best. Usually that would be choosing a career that leads to a good paying job, but I decided to go the other route. It was obvious to my mom that I love making art, love drawing and making things. So I was happy she was super supportive of my decision and I am thankful because I know many people's parents would not approve of it. Art is known to not be that successful for most, but I felt determined back then to make it work. Unlike other people, though I was not aware of what DACA offered, I did know what pursuing a career in art looked like. I knew that it was going to be hard. I knew it was something that I could not do on my own. I knew that I still needed to learn so much more and I knew that it would take a really long time. However, we still needed to go over the first hurdle which was, can I go to college as a DACA recipient? Since it wasn't speculated that I could, I took the college prep course that my high school offered. I talked to several people and none of them saw an issue with me applying. At this point, I knew art was what I was going to pursue and I didn't see myself doing anything else. So I took my ACTs. In my senior year, I was also taking college algebra and of course AP drawing, which now thinking about it, I should have known that attending college wouldn't have been a problem for me since college algebra is like a college credit but i think i took this in my second semester of my senior year so by that point i would have already applied to college and maybe i just didn't think about it twice anyhow my art teacher really wanted me to attend university she also didn't see an issue with me applying she was also the one to help me out fill out the application the only thing she didn't help me with was fafsa and it just happens that FAFSA was the first thing we struggled with. So for those of you who don't know, FAFSA is basically federal aid. It takes the income your parents make and, and through that the government decides how much money to give you. The more money your parents make, the less money you get and vice versa. Now being that I am an immigrant, of course the government isn't going to want to help me. Plus to complete the FAFSA document, you need to provide a U.S. citizen signature, which I could not give. So we had no other option. We talked to several people again, and they still didn't see an issue with me sending in the application. So we tried to send it without a signature, and it worked. I sent it to three different schools, the Tyler School of Art in Temple University, Pratt Institute, and the Delaware College of Art and Design. Now, though my art teacher was helping me with the application, she still didn't fully understand the limitations that I had. She probably thought that I could get federal aid and loans to help with the cost, but that was a no to both. However, we didn't know that immediately. The reason I am bringing this up is because she really wanted me to go to Tyler School of Art. My two other classmates really liked Tyler and it was their type choice, so my teacher wanted me to join them. However, I knew it was too expensive, which is why I didn't end up completing my application to Pratt. That and also their application process was definitely not friendly for non-US citizens. And even after my efforts of finding a cheaper school that seemed like it had a good education and that it was fun, my teacher said that I was 
better than that. She didn't see community college as something that offered a good education or opportunities. So because of that, I didn't manage to apply to the Delaware College of Art and Design, and I will be referring to them as DCAD. But things were happening, and with the Tyler representative coming to see us and approving my portfolio, then in there, you know, we were having our hopes up. I had also won a thousand dollar scholarship from the art society where I live. So I was having a lot of good things happening while also panicking internally. And then the day came. My two classmates announced that they had been accepted to Tyler and that they both got a scholarship. And of course they were waiting for me. I didn't know that emails had been sent out already. So when I went to check my email, the first one that I read was congratulating me for getting a thousand dollar scholarship which was the same scholarship my classmates got and i was panicking because i really thought that i got accepted however on the next email it had said that i had been put on the waiting list that my teacher was mad is an understatement she called the university after school um, while i was there and she yelled at whoever was on the other side of the phone saying that it was unfair to send a student a scholarship when they haven't even been accepted yet my act scores were brought up because i didn't do so well she was like then why send a scholarship to a student that is that far low in the waiting list it was a very embarrassing moment knowing that i was so low in the waiting list and yet they still messed up this hard but my teacher ended up fighting hard for me and it didn't feel good, but they did pity accept me. Anyhow, my senior year wrapped up. I cried on my graduation day, especially when seeing one of my favorite teachers. But yeah, shout out to uh, Miss Lloyd. I can't remember her current last name since she got remarried, but honestly, having somebody like her really helped me through high school. Earlier that day for graduation as well, my our teacher did give me flowers and congratulated me in all of my accomplishments. And then came the other part that everybody struggles with, which is navigating a college website, signing up for classes, finding roommates, figuring out how to pay. I literally struggled with all of this. And I was also too shy to ask any of my high school classmates for their help. We did have close family friends who had kids already in college. However, the advice they gave us wasn't that helpful. It had to do with loans. Yet again, that was the advice from the mom. Looking back, I realized that she actually was kind of out of touch with her kids and what they were actually going through in college. And I could have asked them, but again, I was very shy to do so. But it would have been very helpful because the things that I was struggling with were things that they struggled with. But that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, all of those efforts wouldn't have been worth it. Since I was considered an international student at Tyler, I was invited to arrive at the campus early. We did plan on joining them that day, but I got lost. And so we ended up just going to the main building. Um, there I was asked if I had a student ID and I said no. The guy told me he would print one out for me, but immediately saw that I had some important documents missing and or incompleted. So he suggested to talk to financial aid um, and we met with the financial aid lady. She informed us that the only document that was basically incompleted was FOSFA. The only thing that you're missing is a US citizen signature. And I told her we could not provide her with that. She said, anybody can really sign it, anybody who you trust and who trusts you, but we happen to not have anybody like that in our lives. She then said, well, I'm sorry, there is not much I can do. Without a US citizen signature, I can't allow you to start classes. Since my mom didn't speak English, I had to basically translate everything over to her. Um, and I told her exactly what the lady said. And I could tell it immediately that my mom was heartbroken. She immediately apologized uh, for believing that she could give us a better future. And she like started crying. There's only been a few times that I've seen my mom cry. And I think this was one of the first times that I've genuinely like see her, like saw her crying, crying. Um, and like as a result, she made me cry as well. Because we were crying, the lady asked like what was wrong. And I just told her that my mom was just very uh, upset 
because she felt like she had failed us and that this meant so much to us and it just kind of sucked that it you know it wasn't happening and um we actually made the the lady tear up she apologized and said that she just couldn't do much about it um there was really not much we could do um and we left philly feeling very defeated i know many would be like what good future could art bring you um that it made your mom so upset she also saw my two younger siblings being able to do the same right pursue what they wanted with secondary education you know my my mom took a lot of risk to give us a better life and she just saw it all crumbling in front of her um especially when it had been months of like this is actually happening. It was embarrassing, you know, uh, and we had to go back home. However, my mom still was hopeful because with DACA, she knew that we could still get a pretty decent job. However, that didn't mean that I would give up. I had a light bulb moment and asked myself, do all schools require FASFA? What about a small community college? So I think it was a day or two after being rejected from Tyler, I reached out to the Delaware College of Art and Design. I explained my situation and asked if FASFA was required. They said no, but that they would need proof of it not being accepted. Luckily, I had already sent my FASFA to them, so they checked and they saw that all I needed was a U.S. citizen signature. They said there was no issue of me applying to their school since they had the document. They knew it was incomplete, but they had it and that that was the important part. So she said, okay, I can schedule a portfolio review and an orientation for you on Friday, but there's no promises that you'll get accepted for this year. I accepted the offer. I told my mom and the beacon of hope was back. I got my portfolio ready for a review and headed over to... Wilmington, Delaware that Friday. At this point, there were four days left before classes started. We first got my portfolio reviewed by the administration and the dean. I showed them all of the work that I had done for my AP drawing class and they seemed to really enjoy it. Here are two of the pieces they liked the most and what made them accept me immediately. I literally filled out the application that day and the dean was the one to write my letter of recommendation since I needed one. And he also persuaded me to live there, though I was planning on commuting at first. <laughs> now, it may sound kind of crazy. What would they accept me so quickly? I think they saw a potential in me that could benefit them in the future. And honestly, I am talking about them now. And I often praise them because they were they're genuinely a very good school. They could have just accepted my portfolio and have me apply for the next year. However, they knew of my situation and Loki how desperate I was. So if they did tell me to wait a year, that I would also apply to other schools and possibly find something better. Um, I think they would see how there was a possibility I wouldn't attend there at the end. Um, okay, so I was very shy about what I was trying to get on here. And because I don't want to sound like a narcissist, <laughs> even though I am told a lot of the times that I'm very confident when it comes to me talking about art and stuff like that. And I am because I feel like throughout my entire career, I've been a very talented artist. And a lot of the times schools benefit from very talented and ambitious artists because these artists end up going on to do very big things, having very successful solo exhibitions, getting awards, grants, or even residencies. And art schools love to promote their past students being successful. And I think DCAD saw that trade in me. It is a marketing tactic to see that students who have attended that school university benefited from attending that school, even though a lot of times that's not exactly the case. Schools still love to advertise that kind of stuff because those artists are attached to them in some, in some way. I think I'm just tooting or tooting my horn too hard, but uh, I don't know. And at the same time, schools are money hungry, even if you are poor. So the dean persuading me to live in the dorms was pretty much a money grab, which I do not appreciate. Financially, I only had around $3,000 at this point. Tuition for DCAD was 12000 at the time, 
boarding dorm was 7,000. I will say I did read the prices wrong and thought it was 12,000 per year, but of course that is wrong is $12,000 per semester. I was told I would not get any scholarships since I applied very, very late and I was fine with that. We talked to the bursar and she didn't really give us a payment plan. She told us to pay as much as we could every month. I did have a part-time job as I mentioned. I would often go back home during the weekends and work there. I didn't make much money, but it did pay for a bit of my tuition. I didn't have to worry about saving up for art supplies either since DCAD had that covered and they would provide you with a kit of everything you would need for that year. So not having to worry about that was really nice. Living at DCAD wasn't too bad because it is a small school and their dorms are quite nice. You get your own bathroom in your room and most rooms have two spaces. One which is basically a studio slash living space and the other is a shared bedroom. I will touch on their education at the end of the video simply because I want to compare this community college art school to a more prestigious art school. Anyways, I did pretty well in my classes and made it to the dean's list at the end of the semester. So they did end up giving me a scholarship that covered some of my tuition. I also realized that I was kind of scammed into living there. The dean hyped up really needing to live there for events and to have access to the facilities. However, I rarely stayed late at the school and I wasn't that social. So, so the events were really not that important to me. Um, also, I saw how much it cost and I decided that living there was just not worth it and so I did not stay there my second semester. Though the scholarship covered a good amount of my tuition, I still needed to match a quota. Um, it was not too hard to reach that goal since the scholarships helped, so I was able to easily move on onto my second semester. At least, from, at least from what I remember, I think my mom would have a different story to tell, but I do think paying for other semesters was a lot harder. But I'm not really sure if that's because she helped a lot that first semester. During my second semester, I would be doing an hour drive to school. I only paid $1,000 for my parking permit and gas wasn't that expensive due to it being cheap in Delaware. That also meant that I could work more hours on my part-time job back home, which meant more money towards tuition. I believe the scholarship I got covered around 50%. And so that was a pretty good start. Paying to come back the second year was a lot harder. I had to be under $1,000, I believe, to be able to come back the next year. This time, the way we managed to pay it was through borrowing some money from my mom's friends. And with that, we managed to reach the goal very last minute. Literally nobody thought that we would make it, even the bourgeois made a comment about it, but we did and we were really happy about it. In my second year, I had less classes and so I did work my part-time job a lot more. I was a pretty good student despite the fact that I was commuting an hour. I would show up to classes 15 minutes early. I would usually be the first one in class and a few of my teachers would use that against students who lived there would rarely make it on time. During the second year of that school, uh, a lot of the focus is on transferring. Two of the schools that we visited were in Philly. One was the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, which I absolutely fell in love with. The Fine Arts Department also got a visit from the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Never visited, but I did check out their website and I loved what they had to offer. My portfolio got accepted by them, but it was so expensive um, and too far for my comfort, so I never really applied. I also visited the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. They didn't have a sculpture department, so that was an immediate no. As a school, we also visited the University of the Arts in Philly. And as a fine arts class, we got to visit the school again because we were invited by the printmaking department. Though the school seemed good, they didn't have a sculpture department besides pottery. So again, that was an immediate no for me. Once again, I went around to look for cheap options, but this time making sure it was a four-year program. That's when I stumbled with Montserrat College of Rhine Design in Massachusetts. Their Instagram seemed super lively, the school looked like a lot of fun, and living there seemed a lot more doable than living in Chicago. I was more prepared this time for applications, so I did end up deciding to apply to PAFA and Montserrat. The thing that made me want to go to PAFA was how traditional they were, 
in my opinion you're able to do all types of art if you have a more traditional background i also knew that going to a traditional school would push my boundaries when it came to abstraction so that's something that was really appealing to me they had big facilities some standouts being the wood shop metal shop stone room they also had a casting and a foundry room opportunity for studio space for juniors and solo studio rooms for seniors for me it was not too far from home which meant a lot but I could not commute simply because of traffic and parking and the one thing that kind of made it all seem worth it to apply was the opportunity of getting a full ride. I decided to apply to both without calling first unless I ran into issues during the application. I didn't have any issues with Montserrat. However, when applying to PAFA, they had a weird question when deciding if you were an international student. It had to do with your native language, but when I put other, it would ask me for documents I could not provide. If I put English, American, it asked to confirm if I was a US citizen. So I did call them. I explained my situation once again, and he was super understanding of it. He told me to press the option of English and to confirm U.S. citizenship. It wasn't a signature, it was just a confirmation. And he said that he would note on my application that I was a DACA recipient and not a U.S. citizen. Since he said that it was fine, I did just that. I haven't touched on this, but the reason why I can't apply as an international student is having to provide and apply for a student visa. In order to apply for a full ride at PAFA, I had to submit my application for the earlier admission or deadline. Later in January, they sent an invitation to those who were selected to apply for a full ride. I first thought that anyone could apply to this since I was invited to apply to it. I later found out that it was mainly for US citizens. I didn't know if they made an exception for me because I lived in the US for so long or because of how I applied. Regardless, I submitted these two paintings, though you might expect me to do sculpture. But I didn't because I had to complete these projects during my spring break, which was only one week. Submitting paintings was easier for me. The prompt at the time was to choose two paintings from their collection and make a composition inspired by it. I did have to do this other one, which I don't know what the prompt was, but I feel like it was perspective. I did not end up getting a full ride. However, I did get an honorable scholarship, so I got some money from it. Needless to say, I got accepted to PAFA, and honestly, I was shocked at how many scholarships I got. If tuition of PAFA is around $19,000, I got around $15,000 worth of scholarships. It's honestly insane that without getting the full ride, this is how much they would give. The fact that I was able to get that many scholarships without the full ride is insane. It also made my man at ease knowing that I was capable of getting that many scholarships at a school like this because if things didn't work out with it, I knew that I could take a break, save up money, and then come back because paying for it would be very much doable. I also got accepted to Montserrat. Tuition there, funny enough, was around 15000 and I got scholarship that covered up to $14,000 worth of it. Based on this, we thought that Montserrat would be the best option for me. However, I still really wanted to visit it. So we were invited to visit during their big orientation for the kids who did get accepted, and we drove all the way over there to check it out. Honestly, whoever runs our social media should really get a raise because they make it seem so much nicer than it actually was. The school is in a nice area. It is in a small town. It is a very cute place and it seems like a very nice place to live at. The building itself that the school is in seems like it used to be a Catholic school. And that wasn't really what turned it off for me. What really made me decide that I didn't want to go there was the fact that their sculpture department was tiny. They did have more options of things you could do than a DCAD, but from us going in and seeing the student work and seeing the studios that they had for their students, I realized that many of them weren't making the kind of sculptures that I expected. Yeah, so because of my strong focus on sculpture, I was not attracted to what they had to offer. So I did end up declining going there. My mom told me to really think about it and I felt like that was the best decision. I did have to persuade my mom to allow me to go to PAFA. I told her that if I didn't manage to pay that semester that I would put my education on hold 
work for a few years and come back but i really did want to try and see if it was doable if, which in retrospect that was very immature and super risky for me to do however i was happy with my choice at the time anyways i ended up graduating and we had a nice short show for the students i still owed the school some money they weren't pressuring me on paying it however i had to since the only way I could get my senior year transcripts to PAFA was if I paid the entirety of my tuition. I had to pay it all entirely and though PAFA was not pressuring me either, they did send me emails several times asking for my transcripts. There was a point I had to call them and explain why I couldn't send my transcripts any earlier and again, they were super understanding. The registrar explained to me why he really needed my transcripts, but he said that a verbal description of the classes that I took would be enough to make a sh makeshift schedule, which is what he was trying to do. He was just trying to get me the right classes for the credits that I needed. And during the summer, I was working a lot, but not enough to be honest. <sighs> again, with the help of some of my mom's friends, I managed to pay DCAD a month before classes started and literally a few days later we started to pay for PAFA. Now this school has a very strict payment plan. The plan came down to us paying $1,000 a month. That was a big ask for my mom since she said she would pay that due to the fact that I would be paying for an apartment. Now this month is probably one of the most stressful times of my life. Uh, but I will talk about that a little bit later. At this point I was working now to save up for an apartment and to pay rent and some of the tuition. One of my friends who was also going to attend a school in Philly asked if we could rent out a space together. I lived the closest to Philly at the time, so I was the one mainly doing a lot of the apartment hunting. I had really bad luck for the most part. It wasn't until two weeks uh, before classes started that I found a really nice place that had just been put on the market. It was $100 a month. However, when putting in credit scores, we use my stepdad's credit to get the contract going, but the credit system did not was just not able to identify him for some reason. We tried too many times to the point where he said that we couldn't try anymore. And the lady said that it would take a while for him to be able to apply again. And yeah, that really sucked. At this point, my mom said to just rent out a room. However, I could not find anything that was available in time. So my mom put a post out for her friends and one of them happened to know this Mexican family that was renting out a small room. I got in touch with the lady and since I didn't want to leave my friend behind, uh, mainly because I felt bad that I had felt, I do the one thing that I was asked to do. <laughs> I asked the owners if two people could share the room. The lady who I mainly talked to, the wife, said it was perfectly fine. We found out about this lady, I think, three or two days before her classes started. And I just told her that we would meet her in the afternoon after my orientation. So I would be driving an hour and so, and my friend would be driving almost two hours to Philly that day. And we would not only do that once, but twice because we weren't going to move in exactly on orientation day. We wanted to see the place, making sure that it was like big enough for both of us to share. She really did seem to like it. And us paying $200 each, it seemed like perfectly fine. We agreed that that was going to be the best option. And we both told the lady that we would be moving in the next day. So this was pretty much the last like big thing that we needed. And at this point, I was at max stress level. During this time, I grew a lot of words on my fingers. I had been stressed before and grown literally one word on my finger, usually on my right hand, due to stress. I did get it checked the first time that it happened. And the lady said it wasn't contagious or anything, that just not to touch open wounds or anywhere sensitive. And like, besides that, like it was totally fine. She said it will go away over time. And she just was like, I think you just got it from stress. And I was like, okay. So anytime that I felt even slightly more stressed than the usual, I would grow these words on my fingers. But this time it was insane because I went from growing one here and there to literally having around 10. Sorry, my skin is crawling thinking about it because I have phobia of holes and looking at something like that really triggers me. Uh, it makes my skin swell, honestly. Um, for any of you who deal 
who, for any of you who, uh, for, sorry, for any of you who can relate to something like this, and if this happens to you, the way that I, um, that I dealt with getting rid of them because you can't just, like, pull it out or anything, they're just there, the way that you can deal with it is by, uh, putting duct tape on your fingers or any type of tape, even a band-aid, but you basically just want to have your fingers feel moist, you know, makes your, your fingers sweat, and that sweat penetrates, goes into the grooves of the wart, and you have to leave it on there for a few days, um, and eventually the wart will become soft enough that you can just take it off with tweezers. Oh my god, you will have holes on your fingers, um, but trust me, it is worth it, because you do, warts are painful, um, I am a right, my, I'm a, I, I write with my right hand, so even writing was extremely painful, my fingers would be itchy all the time, and the fact that I have a phobia of holes, um, just made me hate my hand, um, but yeah, that is how stressful, that, that, that is, uh, the, but yeah, that is how stressed I was. All right, moving on from that, was I able to pay Fafa? Yes, because on the second day of orientation, I had left early. The students were going to be doing an activity in the afternoon. I didn't really think it was worth it. So instead of doing that, I decided to move in into the apartment. And while I was there, I was called by the school. They said they really needed to see me and to go to the office after the orientation was over. I told them that I wasn't at the orientation, but I could head over as soon as I could. Then it just happens that my roommate called me immediately right after, um, asking if I could go pick her up because her dad was going to be going back to New York. And I said, oh, yeah, sure. Um, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to like ride the bus and learn the route of how to get a school. It sounds really dumb that my friend would call me. Of like hey can you come pick me up she thought that i would be driving to pick her up but i actually took the bus got off the bus and she's like i thought you were driving i was like what oh it was like no we we're gonna be taking the bus i like i can't afford parking so on our way to pafa we got some smoothies because it was a very hot day i do remember asking in the phone like was it something bad and they said no and that's why i was like not freaking out um, because it could have been the same situation as tyler but it wasn't so i was a lot more relaxed um but anyways we got there i was asked to sit down at the administration's office and i was met with uh somebody who i consider to be like a guidance and then next to her was the administration's lady and this is how this conversation went they said that the reason they called me was because the winner of the full ride had withdrawn their application from pafa and that they were going to be giving it to the next runner-up because i had a sugar high the first words that came out of my mouth were oh my god do you know why they withdrew their application and i mean come on diana read a room um they were like no we don't know the reason but that's not the point of why we're bringing you here. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, Diana, well, you're the runner-up. And I just stared at them. And they were like, you got the scholarship. It took me a few seconds to realize what was going on. And then it, like, hit me. I was like, wait, what? I gotta tell my mom. Thank you so much. This sucks for the other person. I, I really don't know what they would do this. And again, they were just shocked that I was even bringing up the previous winner and um, why I was so concerned about them. But I genuinely was wondering, like, why would they give up such, like, a huge opportunity? But I'm sure there is, like, a very clear explanation for that. I, I then asked them if I could give them a hug, even though I was very sweaty and sticky. Um, they said yes. The first person I told was my roommate because she just happened to be there. And she happened not to be that excited about it. Then I told my mom and she said, you are literally so lucky. This is an angel watching over you. And my mom is super religious. So making the decision to go to Pafa was, of course, very risky. But I do think it was worth it. It was a very intuitive and dumb decision to do so. But if I had not decided to go... I don't think they would have contacted me saying that I was the runner-up. I think they would have just given it to the person who was already attending that school. So taking the risk for sure paid off in my circumstance. However, getting this scholarship, it did not mean that I wasn't poor. I struggled a lot to get a job in the city. A few jobs I applied to did not get back to me. 
I also didn't realize how much the school's credit system sucked and my schedule was truly packed. I had classes twice every single day. Also, PAFA classes required you to buy a lot of materials that were not cheap. Paying for a SEPTA card with $100 a month. At that point, I had to choose between transportation, art supplies, or groceries. Due to this, at the end of my first semester, I decided that I would start walking to school to save up money. I didn't want to ride a bike in the city because it generally seemed very dangerous so walking two hours every day was the only option that I had um, but because I did walk two hours to school every day they did become worried um, especially since I would spend more than 12 hours at school and then I would be leaving at 11 at night so they were just concerned for my safety during that time I did lose over 30 pounds and till this day, my friend Alicia loves to joke around the fact that I was broke. Though I did get a full ride, last three semesters at DCAD, I did end up having to pay for fees, which were around $1,000. So during those semesters, I did pay $200 a month to the school. I often did go back home since I got homesick a lot. And when I did do that, I would work my job there as well since I really liked the people who I worked with. And that is how I managed to get money for rent and money for supplies. My mom, again, was just helping me pay tuition. Overall, I would say the PAFA was very considerate of my situation. The people I often talked to were understanding and had solutions for most of my problems. I did have to pay both schools out of pocket because as a non-U.S. citizen, I could not get a traditional student loan. Literally, the first thing that they ask you is if you're a U.S. citizen. You could get a loan through the bank but the interest rate is really not that good and it's highly recommended not to get an interest from the bank unless it is your very, very last resort. What I did learn was that there are plenty of colleges and universities out there that are donor-based, DCAD and PAFA being some of them, Harvard being another one. So schools that are donor-based are likely to accept DACA recipients since FAFSA is not something that's required. And with donors, these schools have a lot of opportunities for scholarships. Keeping good grades throughout the school and being a good student really helps. I really did push through my education, mainly because of stereotypes. I really wanted to graduate around the time that everybody else was graduating I did not want to feel like I failed or anything and though the very dumb risky decisions that I took paid off I know that is not what's going to happen to everybody you know taking your time is totally fine um going to PAFA did teach me that because a lot of my classmates were either on their 40s 50s 60s or even 70s a lot of them were people who had already done an entire different career and now wanted to pursue arts. And so you kind of do humble yourself going through that experience and there is no late start to it. Attending college, paying for it, it is not easy, especially as a DACA recipient. And so if you do need to take your time, if you do need to work and save up in these things, that is totally, completely fine. I, I did push through it because I felt very self-conscious about it. And I did put myself through a lot of stress. And I did put my mom in very, very unwanted situations. And that is something that I do regret. <sighs> but I am lucky now that I don't own any student loans because of my efforts. I am sure my experience is not unique and that there are some people who have gone through something similar, but again, it's something that I would not fully recommend in the way in which I approached it, which is why I'm sharing all the things that I learned about going to college or university as a DACA recipient isn't impossible. There might be a lot more effort you have to put in to be able to, for one, get accepted and second pay but at the end of the day if secondary education is something you want graduating feels a lot more worth it personally i wouldn't want it to have it any easier because it almost feels like i've done the impossible and that is why i'm so happy and often very confident about where i am today i might be missing some stuff here so if you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments i am not an expert i'm not sure how many things have changed within the past five years now that is more of my background that is everything that i went through all right so i think i said everything that i wanted to say now we're going to move on to is school actually worth it then i'm going to talk about a little bit about each school that i attended how each one had different types of education and different goals all right so is art school worth it that is a very hot topic 
that I've seen a lot of videos of on YouTube but I feel like none of them really do the topic justice. I think there was only one video that really touched on some of these aspects that I want to talk about but not in full detail and as I answer this question I will try and remain unbiased. I feel like I would have a bias based on my experience and how hard I worked to go to art school and of course I would say it was worth it even of itself. Is it worth you spending your money on something like this? I don't think that everyone needs a college education. I don't think you need to go to art school specifically to become an artist. I've mentioned this before, right? But going to art school, I knew that I would be exposed to a lot of things and being exposed to those things can be good because you find out things that you like and things that you don't like. You can only really get the experience in art school, especially if you're someone who's not personally motivated to go out there and try things out on your own. Going to art school is really good because it does place you in that space where you need to try things out. I, I know personally that worked for me, but I know it doesn't work for everybody. I think you can be a successful artist without having to go to art school, but if you really do feel like you need an education, I think art school will provide that for you. Of course, every art school doesn't have the best education out there. If you're going to a school that runs a two-year program, you're likely to get a good education that will be helpful when transferring to a different school. If you're going to a four-year school, the goal is to leave there with a potential job or already having clients and collectors, and if not, also be a really good practicing artist. You're not going to be learning about job opportunities or different paths within the first two years of attending art school. A lot of it is fundamentals to improve your skills or even to introduce different mediums. But again, it is a building process, and though you may not think you will advance as an artist or evolve as an artist, there's still a high probability that you would. So what exactly are you spending your money towards? Well, for the most part, you are paying for resources, access, and opportunities. One of the big access points is actually your teachers. Your professors are likely working artists themselves or business owners. They are also potential collaborators. They're there to answer the questions that go beyond what they are actually teaching in class. If you go to an art school specifically, building that friendship is not that complicated. They are a huge part of your tuition. Along with your teachers, you also get access to the school's facilities. That could include anything that has to do with fibers, paper making, printmaking, sculpture. A lot of schools also offer many different opportunities. Going to field trips, the chance to enter for travel scholarships, funds and grants. I don't know if every school has that opportunity to apply for funds and grants, but I know the PAFA definitely does. Another thing the PAFA does that I'm not sure a lot of art schools do is a chance of having a one-on-one -on -one talk with visiting artists. Another thing that I think is often overlooked is access to workshops. I've seen a lot of people also say that art school doesn't offer any talk on taxes or things like that, but many art schools actually do. However, students don't really care about the emails that they're sent by the school. And many of the emails are in regard to workshops. This usually happens during lunchtime or after school. But these workshops usually have professionals coming in and talking about a very specific aspect of the field. Overall, that is what you are spending your money on. It is a lot easier to have it all in one place like art school. Of course, you don't need to specifically attend to art school to have all of these access and resources but it is the one and all type of place. A lot of different schools offer various different things. I would highly suggest to visit all the schools that you would like to attend. And I would also be sure to ask many questions. So though a lot of schools focus is on education, other schools focus, it's not much on education, but more of an, an overall experience. I would say that DCAT definitely focused on education and a very fun way of doing so and PAFA focused more of an experience and it can be very heavy with a very prestigious art school. You can leave DCAD having a good foundation or everything. I say this because DCAD is mainly formed out of animation and illustration. Those are their biggest classes and their biggest facilities. So you might think that that is one of the biggest focuses and something that they spend a lot on. But the other departments are really good as well and this has to do with the fact that their teachers are extremely knowledgeable and talented. Also the classes that they choose to teach are actually very well planned out. For example, their color theory class. One year of learning more than just complementary colors. It is one of their hardest classes but it was also one of my favorites. Their drawing classes are also pretty good going from figurative drawing, self-portraits, and still lives to perspective. Again, the basics, but also adding abstract ideas for their drawing majors. 
I did not have the best experience with one of the drawing teachers. I would also not say that it was the worst or for any particular reason besides just different mindsets, but that's a story for another day. Their intro to oil painting class is honestly a lot stronger than the one at PAFA, at least in terms of a foundation. Oil painting is taught at DECAD on your second year and it's only taught to the fine art majors. At PAFA, it is required for all the first years to take and I actually kind of saw it as a waste for most students. Mainly because painting is not cheap. You have to spend a lot of money on oils, linseed oil, turpentine, canvases, palette paper. These could be materials that the students might not use ever again depending on their major and it honestly sucks that they are not taught how to take care of these materials. From seeing a kid mixing paints with a paintbrush to watching students go through canvases of canvases and canvases to literally one of the most painful things watching students throw away their oil paint. These fundamentals are taught up the academy and more that are not taught of PAFA since you are somewhat expected to already know somewhat of oil painting. The two things that schools had in common was use of a lot of color as well as underpainting and that was about it. Now going back to DECAD, the liberal arts classes were honestly pretty good. The one that shocked me the most was the fact that they offered after the artist apocalypse, which is mainly mandatory for their fine art majors. This class is basically art theory and it's super painful since it is covered within one semester and it is a three to four hour long class and that is hard to do after going from one and a half hour courses. It is a bit much, but honestly, I'm impressed that they teach it. The other thing that kind of correlates to this class is our 4D art class, which is basically videography. In this class, you're taught how to edit videos and how videography is connected to artwork. And I think that's really interesting since our theory covers contemporary art. Now for the sculpture department, of course, my realm. The school obviously does work with clay, plaster, mechanical, and even wood projects. But I was mainly shocked by the fact that they offered stone carving. The reason why I find very fascinating at this is because it is in their curriculum. It was not at the curriculum of PAFA, even though they did have a stone room. And the way in which the teacher taught it was extremely smart, where he basically forces you to make a non-representational piece that basically strays you away from perfection. This allows you to get familiar with the tools and the materials. And I honestly think it is a very smart way to do it. And I actually had to put this in practice when I got the opportunity to stone carve again my second year. This time I decided to make a wing because I'm obsessed with wings. And I actually flew by this carving really fast and decided to make another one since I did have time. Yeah, that wasn't the only shocking thing we learned. The sculpture room is very small, so often we would make small projects, so I was very impressed when we got to do something with metal. The sculpture teacher for the second years is a blacksmith, and she managed to show us something very impressive that can be done in a small room. Yes, that is metal cutting. She taught us the basis on creating a design from a metal sheet and how to use something like the jewelry saw to cut out the design. It is not exactly taught in a sculptural setting, but it's widely used in jewelry. Thus, the jewelry saw. Find this a unique way of introducing students to different materials that are often found in bigger schools. Another unique thing we did in this class, despite the fact that we had four woodworking machines, was wood lamination. So in wood lamination, you basically build up to the sculpture instead of carving it. For example, taking different sizes of plywood and cutting them to specific shapes. That way, when you glue it all together, it becomes its final form. You can use a bandsaw, but... You could also just use a handheld machine to cut out the shapes. The way in which you end up shaping the actual form is by using a drill bit and a sanding bit. I got to learn a pretty cool technique and through these projects I learned that I could do anything within a small space and with a little amount of tools. This is basically how I make my sculptures now. Of course, I took all of these three skills with me, evolved stone carving and wood lamination to wood carving at PAFA. I also evolved my metal cutting skills, but again, all the basis of this came from DCAD. And though I did have a good experience there, I actually became more emotionally attached to PAFA. This mainly came about because I was discovering myself as an artist and started to make work that I loved. Yet again, most of these projects were from outside the class since I never got to take wood or metal shop classes. 
This mainly had to do with Papa's awful credit system. I'm not going to go deep into the credit points, but let's just say that I walked in with 72 credit points. I needed 123 credits to graduate. I was used to DCAT's 3 credit system and downgraded to Papa's 1.5 credit system. That meant that many of the classes I wanted to take, which were also required, were cut off, either because my liberal arts was more mandatory or because of the sculpture classes I was forced to take. Puffa is a traditional school, so I understand needing to take cast and molding, ecorche, and figure sculpting, but I was forced to take 3D drawing, which was pretty much a setup to 3D printing, and then process and premise. The one of two classes were three credit points, but also a class that I found to be a waste of learning time and a waste of a talented teacher. What also saddens me is that this isn't the only class that this teacher was in charge of. He had another class that was pretty much the same thing. Now, you could debate with me that it wasn't about the work, but learning how to critique. Well, I took an ideas and critique class, and that class was way better. Similar style of making random-ish things. Each project had its purpose and reading material with it. And I actually learned how to critique from this class. The only thing I learned how to do in process and premise was how to weld. But again, it made me mad that the teacher who was teaching this could have taught an entire metal shop class and stone carving class instead of this two useless classes. And he was the one teaching continuing education for metal shop and stone carving. You can also ask why not take the continuing education classes? Well, transferring and already having two classes a day i did not want to add another class on the weekend plus from continuing education you're only allowed to choose one as a PAFA student besides that i also found most of the liberal classes to be not that interesting but i did not take any interest in the cultural liberal arts it actually made me believe more that some people could benefit from separating identity from art. In terms of history, I only took one history class, which was non-Western. I really enjoyed this class. Uh, another cool class was Intro to Business, dedicated to working artists and how to basically run the business side of it. Very useful class. A sculpture class that I actually enjoyed was Fan Materials. Three teachers who assigned various different projects to show that art can be made from anything. Some of my most colorful pieces were made because of this class. The printmaking department, all of their classes were top tier. Many people actually switched to printmaking after taking it because it is just so interesting and there are so many things you can do with it and there's just so many different options. It's some of the most fun and skillful classes you can take there. The other cool thing about the printing department is that they host a winter market every year where you can sell your prints. Now, the most useful class, and though I was trashing his 3D drawing class, um, is the one that is taught by the chair of the department, public site work. I think that the premise of this class should be added to every major because it really sets an example for different career paths that you can take, specifically here, sculpture. The class consists of an entire semester project where the teacher takes a real public site work open call that is modified for the students. The goal is to have all the documents and drawings necessary to pitch your proposal to three complete strangers. This includes a letter of interest, a proposal description, your portfolio, a map of the site, concept, detail, and shop drawings, as well as a budget, timeline, and of course, a resume. You skip a lot of the steps because you are automatically accepted to present your final concept. This specific subject can be done by both sculptors and painters, and I do really think a class like this should be added to every major. Overall, the teachers there are super talented and knowledgeable and good critics. I just think some of the classes should not exist and they should be using their teachers in a much better way. I would recommend to go for three to four years specifically because two years is simply not enough to have a taste of everything. If you would like to see the final project that I made at PAFA, here's a video I made a few years ago. If you would like to support what I do, my website is in the description. I have a shop on there and you could also sign up for my newsletter as I have various things coming out often. Thank you for sticking around. If you have any questions, go nuts on the comments. Share your experience or any additional thoughts you have. The video is long enough as it is, so I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye.